there and welcome back to some more Forza Motorsport 4. Today we'll continue on with Let's Play and this is episode 109. In today's episode we are taking a look at the European Sedan Challenge. For that we need a European Sedan and the European Sedan we are using for today is going to be the 2010 Jaguar XFR. Supposedly the worst car in Forza Motorsport in terms of handling but I actually think it isn't too bad. It comes in purple. Which is always a bonus. Right. Uh, do I have any Jaguar affinity whatsoever? I should have really thought about that first. No, I don't. And I can't just stick a giant turbo on this and call it good. Okay, we might actually have to spend money. Or do we just run it as is? Um... Do you know what? I'm thinking we'll just run it as is and we'll just see what happens. This Jaguar is faster than this year's Ferrari, yes. Everything is faster than the SF1000 today. Everything you see. Anyways, European Sedan Challenge is showdown for the fastest executive speed machines from Europe. Five races, a mystery bonus. No, we don't want to upgrade the car. We'll run it as is, we'll see how it does. Hockenheim, a place where this car will be quicker than this year's Ferrari. I don't want to make too many F1 memes, because otherwise it becomes like a... I like how that picture is a C32 AMG and a E60 M5, two cars which are just not, there's no comparison between, a, I mean, they're both German, they're both got automatic gearboxes, uh, they're both probably unreliable, actually yeah, I know for a fact that C-Class is not the most reliable thing. The SF-1000 was a mistake. Apparently so, although I'm hearing it's because they tried to build it around that, um, whatchamacallit, they tried to build it around that battery workaround they had, which got banned. So, chat shit get banned. That's the rule we learned from Ferrari. Anyways, in this field, oh, is that a Jaguar? That's the German way of overtaking a car. Don't mind that. Oh my god. This is the first time I've ever seen a Jaguar where um, the steering wheel controls are actually symmetrical. It's the whole reason I never bought a Jaguar. The funny thing is you probably all think that's a joke, but that is actually one of the main <laughs> reasons I didn't buy a Jag is because the steering wheel controls have these like weird little spinny volume control things on them. And uh, I, I, I did, uh, one had one on one side and two on the other side, and it really irritated me. It was the same on every Jaguar I saw. So I uh, really didn't want a Jag after I saw that. Which is a pity, because the S-Type was... I mean, the S-Type's kind of an ugly car, but it's hilariously cheap to insure. Nice title, by the way. Thank you. Again, this Jaguar is faster than an SF1000. It's also apparently quicker than a bunch of Audis at the moment. Although it's quite funny, the RS6 is being beaten by its smaller RS4 brethren. I can't remember in top gear laps. Actually, the RS4... Mm, no, I don't think it was quicker than an RS6. Top gear is a more of a straight line speed track, so... It's one thing people forget about top gear, even though it has like all those corners which are really hard to take. The actual track itself is more, you know, you need a good amount of straight line speed, you need a balanced car ideally, but, uh, you know, the handling cars do well, but the straight line speed cars do well as well, so. It's pretty interesting how stuff like that breaks down. Look at that. Precision German overtaking. Let's try not to bot us on the, uh, on the outside there. There we go. It is a bit of a pig. I will be honest. The Jag is a little bit of a pig when it comes to the way it drives. It's um, you can definitely feel the weight. There's no doubting that. It also rolls quite considerably, which is weird because apparently the XFR or IRL is actually a pretty solid car. I think it's sort of M5-ish levels of abilities. It seems to soak up the punishment quite well, though. This one's been through a fair few wars and it already looks, you know, I mean it looks used, but it doesn't look, you know, you could sell this on a dealer forecourt, probably. 
Also, the clock works in the middle. That's a nice feature. I love a working clock in a car. Yeah, we definitely need to get some Jaguar affinity and stick some upgrades in this, though. I can't say, unlike usually where I get caught off guard by not having any affinity, where uh, this one, it isn't really all that. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It wasn't really all that odd that I didn't have any Jaguar affinity. I could have sworn I might have, um, I might have used an E-Type for something, but apparently not. Unless that was in Forza 3. I don't even remember. I do, I am very anal. I've, I've been over this before. I'm very anal about sort of how, uh, you know, what cars go where. As some people have noticed before. So, if I use a car in Forza Motorsport 3, I'm trying not to use it in this game. And as a result of that, um, I've got like a giant tracker of like every car I used in Forza 3. It's supposed to have all the PIs, and I got like halfway through it, and then I got really bored because it was like 5 o'clock at night when I was sorting it. And then I have like all the cars for Forza 4, so I literally have to cross reference everything. There is a few cars which are going to have to pop up here and there. Because this game does over overly a lot, uh, overly rely. There we go. I can speak. Uh, overly rely on certain manufacturer cars. So, for example, uh, trying to pick a car for like Dodge showcases and Chevrolet showcases that I haven't used before is a bit hard. Basically, any car that was really cheap as well, I've used a lot as well because you know trying to. When you're playing these games casually, and... Hello. Oh. Oh. What? Oh, you said oh, so I was like, what? No, I said hello. Oh, hello. <laughs> Greetings. Uh, greetings. Today I'm driving a Jaguar XFR, which is faster than a Ferrari SF1000. Ooh. Oh, God. <laughs> It punts just uh, as well as a Ferrari SF1000 as I'm well. <laughs> yeah, I, I really try to keep the variety up. Because I, the problem is, if you like Rhino or something like that, you enjoy racing games. I enjoy cars. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> I'm not really too interested in the games, I just like the cars. Yeah, variety is the spice of life. Yeah, exactly. And yeah, which oh, is weird. Oh, hello, uh, plant pot. Yes. I have no variety in my actual life. Hmm. I eat all of two meals. Although yesterday I went to KFC for the first time in six months. Fucking hell. <laughs> I know. Eight piece popcorn chicken. I was like, I'm going to have one of those. I think <laughs> really? I had... That's it? Yes. I sat in a drive through for half an hour. Almost murdered some dickhead in a Kia. So you waited half an hour in a KFC drive through queue just to get eight piece popcorn 80. chicken. 80. Oh, 80? Yes. Fucking hell. <laughs> yeah, there's more. I thought you said eight. No, 80. <laughs> Jesus. 5.99. That's pretty good. Yeah, that is I actually pretty I think I've good. eaten enough popcorn chicken to last me for like the next six months, like, but <laughs> it was fun. It, it was fun for like the first 60 odd pieces and then afterwards it got a bit mm. samey. Yes, 80. <laughs> like, you know, whenever I go to um, KFC, I think it's usually like a boneless banquet. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. To go for. Um, uh, I did actually try the Mighty Bucket for one. Hmm. Couldn't finish it. I see you're I a man I... of culture with your boneless as well, because I can't stand bones and chicken. I can't stand bones. I mean, you know, there's a... Chick, a place that does, um, you know, sort of like KFC, but not really. Mm. Um, and, you know, they don't do boneless stuff, so usually when I get a chicken, it's like either a chicken burger or the Diddy Little Spicy Wings, because then that way I can have like a couple of bites and then I'm not having to worry about the bone. Yeah. It's because just, the problem isn't with even poverty. nice when it's near the bone. That's the thing. It's just mm. soggy and ugh. yeah. And the problem with the normal chicken is sometimes you get pieces with you know little bones that you know can easily get caught in your teeth. Slightly sending. It's annoying. Slightly sending. Don't mind me. 
There we go. <laughs> and that's how you make an overtake. <laughs> that is the B... Yes, there, there was BCCC yesterday. You'll be very pleased to know it was incredibly fucking boring. <laughs> Wait, where they uh, where where were they at? Not kill, which is usually fun. Oh, fucking yeah, of course. Yeah, I saw a fucking video um, that one of the drivers put up showing them literally almost killing a man. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. there's quite a few crashes, but like for the most part, the race was just pretty boring because Sutton and Turkington yeah. sort of fucked off at the front. Race three was pretty good though. Yeah, normally not kill is one of the more interesting tracks just because well. You know, most it's based on a fucking giant ass hill. Mm. Oh fuck! Alps in a jag. All right, this would be interesting. This car is heavy. It's doing all right considering it's ninety nine pi down on everything else though. So. Fucking now, it's <laughs> almost be... an entire class. Yeah, it's a five oh one. So basically, bomb of the class. Yeah, although, ironically, I think that makes it the same PI as a Nissan Skyline R34 in this game, so... There we go. Yeah, but here's the thing... I love, the, I love those cars that are teeter. Because it's like, you're even the worst car in A class, or you're, like, the best car in B class. Might I suggest uh, a buttload of power? Power costs money. Tires don't really... Five grand, Jesus. Yeah, we'll go with that and sport weight reduction because it turns the PI to five six nine. Nice. Exactly. <laughs> right. <laughs> Although we haven't addressed the bigger issues like the suspension and the braking and <laughs> then never mind. Um, it's who fine. Needs WeatherTech Sports Car Championship. Right. Hmm. Um, Isn't that the thing with the Laguna? I think no, it wait, is. No, wait, Laguna Seca owns that truck. Yeah. Yes, Laguna Seca owns WeatherTech. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Laguna Seca is an entity. It's a living, breathing oh, um, thing. Oh, it's part of IMSA. So, um, International Motorsports Association. Holy um, Christ alive. Yeah, he placed eight. I have turn in. I, I, it, it turns. <laughs> mm -hmm. I forgot what a car that can actually turn in Forza 4 4 felt like. Because mm. when the car drives like it did, it kind of just drives like a car in Forza 7. Yeah. So he plays 8th in uh, that. And then in the 2019 Le Mans, 24 hours, he didn't even finish. Nice. <laughs> so, yeah. Grosjean has 10 podiums? Grosjean yep. kept a car in one piece long enough to get to a podium? Yeah. Jesus. And yet he drives a Haas. Yeah. What a wanker. To be fair, the Haas could probably be good if it had, like, a competent driver lined up. <laughs> if it didn't have... Fucking Grosjean and um, Kevin, who's just tired. Yeah. Kevin already like looks and acts in press conferences like Kimi Raikkonen, and he's like 27. Yeah. And I mean, oh, by the way, did you see the uh, did you see the radio thing? Uh, Kimi got um... the drink, but there was an issue with the drink. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no at Spa. A yeah, because yeah, there's apparently a puddle in his car. Yes. At Ferrari, you get no drink. At Alpha, you get drink just in the wrong place, which sounds like the very that's a very Alpha Romeo thing. <laughs> what do you think of Hamilton's records? I, 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 I like Hamilton, so I like him to have records. The thing is, people moan, but, like, isn't it not nice to, like, be alive to watch like history happening you know like don't get me wrong you'll probably get in 
like I, I don't know how long it'll take Hamilton's records to be beaten, but no one thought Schumacher's records could be beaten, and yet you've seen like two record-breaking runs in your lifetime. So I mean, come on. And I don't like the whole. He's got the best car, yes, but that's because he's the best driver. <laughs> yes. The best drivers kind of get the best cars. Sort of the way it works. <laughs> you know, you prove yourself, you get a good car. <laughs> If you're Roman Grosjean, you get a Renault. If you're Sebastian Vettel, you're not as good as you think you are. Oops. Sorry. It's a bad thing with me making these Ferrari meme videos. Everyone thinks I feel bad for Ferrari. I don't like Ferrari, so... <laughs> it's actually all part of the Ferrari master plan. Yes. Best and driver in the midfield. Worst Ferrari next I weekend. I mean, the best driver in the midfield... I don't know. Raikkonen. <laughs> but, I mean, he doesn't want... Raikkonen just wants to go away now. So. Yeah. Raikkonen's just tired. Spinala. There you go, I said the word. Spinala. Spinala. Yeah. I, I like making the meme videos, though. But, yeah, but... If, It's only at Ferrari's expense. I don't have any other jokes other than Ferrari existing, though. That's the issue. <laughs> yeah. I mean... Things are only going to get worse for Ferrari next weekend. I, um, well, when they get to Monza. Oh, I can, okay, I can make another joke video. Okay, good. <laughs> yeah, because, um, you know, <laughs> they're just going, you thought uh, Spa was banned with them being banned in a straight line. Oh, what's this? Monza. Mostly fast corners and straight lines. Um, oh, yeah. I'm thinking a, um, I'm thinking a, a Mad World remix for Monza. <laughs> <laughs> All around me are familiar midfielders. <laughs> worn out engines, worn out drivers. And just stick a picture of Vettel. Kimi outscored him in both years. I, I mean, Kimi's probably like one of the better drivers in the midfield. Again, he's just sort of old now and tired. Which yeah. I'm fairly certain is what he said in finishing like that interview where they said like, "I'll speak in Finnish," and all I heard, I swear I heard the word "I'm tired." <laughs> in that. <laughs> Which I don't know if he still enjoys it. I think he's supposed to be getting like a chunk of Sauber if he retires though or something. So. But it'll be a sad day when Kimi retires. Because I like Kimi. It also helps Kimi's in my favourite looking car on the field. So. Fight me. The Alpha's the best looking. Mm. I don't really know what the other cars look like to be honest with you. The McLaren's a Silly colour, I know that much. The Renault looks quite good. But you know what the Renault needs though, don't you? Yeah. The, the Renault needs a, just a little hint of, I don't know. What's that colour, Inferno? You, you know the colour, right? Hmm. You know that colour that, like, it's with the primary colours. It goes between red and yellow. I'm trying to remember the name of it. Oh yeah, blue. <laughs> mm. You know, maybe oh, maybe a yeah. bit of blue, some yellow in the Renault, I don't know. Maybe stick a V10 in it and, you know, I don't know. <laughs> maybe get Nelson PK Jr. to not crash. Wait, that was in the horrible orange one. Yeah, I saw the Top Gear interview with him. I loved him from that day forward. Oh, it's my... I didn't know who anyone was when I watched the Top Gear interviews first time around there. I think legitimately the only one we heard about was Lewis Hamilton, but that's because we jack ourselves off with Sport Personality of the Year. So. Which, correct? Wait, Sport Personality of the Year. Don't we have, like, only one of three winners that win that, I'm fairly certain? Like, it's either Lewis Hamilton. What's the tennis are called? The Scottish tennis player, what's his name? Oh, Murray, something. Andy know. Murray, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Andy Murray, and um, 
Lewis Hamilton. Maybe that sprinter. What's his name? Mo Farah. Mm. I don't know any other British sports personalities. I guess Anthony Joshua. Do you think we could get Wade Barrett to win sport personality? <laughs> That'd be great. <laughs> I got some <laughs> bad news, Lewis. <laughs> bang, bang, bang. <laughs> yeah. He's I'm returned to Wawino, isn't he? I got some bad news. Yeah, he's back in Wawino, isn't he? Sport personality of the year. Yes. This year. <laughs> he's back in Wawino, isn't he? Yes. And I, I, made, I know exactly uh, what he needs he to do. A, and when Coulthard made that announcement, I just uh, said, you know, I imagine his first promo back will probably be, I got some bad news for the guys in the back. What the fuck is that BMW doing? I mean, that's one way to take the Top Gear corner. <laughs> Um, uh, it's gotten lost. Yes. It thinks it's, um... <laughs> I think it was about to go around Chicago then. Yeah. Bless it. <laughs> but, um... I mean, I don't think Barrett's returning as a wrestler. I... He's returning as, like, he wants to commentate or something. I, I know exactly uh -huh. what he needs to do. Hmm. Raw commissioner. Actually, that one's actually... Actually, yeah, that would work. Yeah, because then he could scream bad news at people. Yeah, he could break the bad news to people who, uh, you know, have rubbed Tim or Vince the wrong way. <laughs> yeah, he could go up to, like, I don't know, who's the champions these days? Bob Lashley and go, I got some bad news. I got some bad news for you, mate. Yeah, facing our truth. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I got some bad news for you, Bobby Lashley. You what happened to Raguna? It's not true for that title right there. Yeah. What even happened to Raguna? Because like no no one's updated anything since his F two. What the fuck was that? Why? Why is that solid? Anyways, yeah. What actually happened to Raguna? Like after his F two disaster. But yes, I agree. We should get Lord Mahavir in a hass actually. Wouldn't that be great? Roman Grosjean's retired. Who's his replacement? Mahavir again. <laughs> it's just like, oh. Well done. Actually, who's who's the shittest driver on the grid currently? Um. Don't say Juvenaxi. I like Juvenaxi. <laughs> well, it's... That's kind of tough, honestly, because it's easy to say, you know, um, the fucking Williams because they're slow. But George uh, Russell's a very quick driver. It's just yeah, that car I mean, sucks the ass. drivers in the, I mean the truck. Yeah, like you say, the drivers over at Williams, they're quick young drivers, but the car's just not there. Um, I like Giovinazzi. People always criticize him. I, I, that Grill the Grid episode of him with Kimi Raikkonen was great because he just sat there the entire time going, you need to learn your history, young man. <laughs> he calls him young man all the time. It's great. Mm. They actually seem to get along as well, which is amazing. I mean, keep asking opinions. It's what I'm here to do. It's what we're all here to do on our trek around the globe. We're just spout off useless opinions and get into arguments with people. What do I think about Stroll? Stroll's actually pretty good these days. Yeah. He's not so much the uh, guy you see as like, you know, oh, oh, oh I got He's still you. daddy's cash, but... Yeah. Um... <sighs> if ain't If anything, I would probably say, um... Mr. Torpedo himself, I say. Oh, I like Kvyat though. <laughs> yeah, he, he's a meme. I mean, <laughs> you like Kvyat. I mean, people like Kvyat, but he is a bit shit when it comes to racing. But because it's either a case of like he can be pretty decent, or he's a fucking torpedo going into the back of someone else. Bless. 
Right, anyways, we'll continue this discussion next time out because that's the end of the Jaguars. We get four parts affinity. We can't use it anymore, so that's good. Anyways, thanks for you very much for watching. Next time, I'm going to get out of the European events after the event next time round as we take a look at the German SUV challenge. Join us for that. Until then, farewell. You